everybody. It's that time of the year. Springboks are in action against the Welsh soon. Expect starts this weekend. And a man who knows the Springbok team side oh too well, as well as the Welsh team, is this man. Accomplished journalist, author, and rugby extraordinaire, Mark Keohain. Thank you, Ryan. Hello, Kia. <laughs> How are you, bud? Licker, bud. Listen, an important series uh, against the Welsh that the Springboks will face over the next couple of weeks. And, of course, it's a big year because we're preparing for next year's Rugby World Cup in France. We're going to chat to you a little bit about uh, life in the household of Kia Hain. Life's and times of SA's favourite rugby pundit. <laughs> and importantly, this that you've been living with for a while. It's Toyota Corolla Hybrid. This isn't the hybrid version, because you don't really like the hybrid anymore. So this is the plain XR version. And it's a great version. It's a great little car! It's a wonderful drive. Let's get inside and talk some nonsense All right. about it. I'm getting in the car with this lunatic. I don't know. I'm not so sure. If anyone's watching, this is the last video I'll make. Kyo is behind the wheel. I'll kill up. Buckle up, man. Buckle See, up. Buckle up. Buckle up. This is what worries me. Buckle up. <laughs> Listen, mate, let's talk a little bit about the past 20, 30, how many years have you been involved in rugby? Sure. Well, I was published first when I was 15. Jeez. I was still at school uh, out in the northern suburbs. Yeah. Uh, for, no, for the monitor, Teichaberge, <laughs> and then the northern Argus back yeah. in the day. And uh, yeah, and kind of um, did my national service in the police and uh, was still writing at that time as well. And then uh, basically got into journalism 30, 33 years ago. And I've traveled the world and been very fortunate to, uh, been very fortunate to go to every, every major plane, rugby city in the world and watch yes. the Springboks. Yeah. Uh, several World Cups. I've been very blessed to do what I love doing, Absolutely. which is watch rugby and write about it. And a passionate, passionate South African rugby fanatic. I mean, you really, the one thing I like about and I love about you, I don't like it, I love it about you is a lot of people are too scared sometimes to say it as it is. And, you know, I, I think you've never been one to sugar things up. No, if you've got an opinion, you've got to, you've got to say it. Yeah. And, uh, and there's no right or wrong opinion. Yeah. And that's what makes discussion great, makes debate great. Sure. And uh, especially in a country like ours where, where rugby is a religion, yes, we all have opinions. doesn't matter where we sit on the stands. It's from a different vantage point that we see the game and let's talk about it. And the yeah. more we discuss and the more we debate, um, the more we grow. <laughs> I love that because everybody knows that they can have, they can have banter with you. I think uh, one of the first, uh, first things I was taught as a, as a journalist by my mentor, old Archie Henderson, yeah. was if you're going to have an opinion, you must be willing to entertain one. Sure. And uh, and you must be willing to be challenged on that opinion. And, yes. And that's what I love about it. If if I've got box to win by 20 on Saturday and yeah. they lose, I'm, I'm the first one on social media to say, okay, come at me. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people can't do that. Yes. They will stay away for two or three days. Yeah. And then when it favors them, they'll be there to challenge you. So. I would say the All Blacks will smash us, okay? Mm. Guys will get pissed off with me. How, uh -huh. how can you be so unpatriotic? And then we'd lose by 20 and they'd say, are you <laughs> happy? Yeah. I'd say, mate, we haven't beaten them in 10 years. Yeah. We're in New Zealand, that's why we're going to lose. And we've got an awful Springbok side at the moment. Sure. I'm just actually selling you the market. Yeah. Um, so go there and invest your energy, but, but no, it's not going to be a particularly good day. So it's kind of changing perceptions, uh, but, but debates and encouraging and having big opinions. I think that's the spice of life. Eh? Have opinions, be challenged, and everyone walks away a little bit wiser. I love the fact that a lot of people um, look at the rugby kind of a, a, um, a, a Bible or their go to is kio.ca.za. Tell us about the curation of, of that and, and how, you know, because it's not just, it's, it's a full time job and you've got many, you know, full time, I want to say jobs, but to keep that going and, 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 and make that the source and hub of all things content related for you. Yeah, look, uh, Kia was launched in 2004 when I left the Springboks amid yeah. all the racism and the come style draft and that. Yeah. Um, and it's just an opinion blog. Yes. Um, and then it kind of aligned with SA Rugby magazine over time and it kind of uh, took on their digital presence for the print magazine when they then kind of morphed into a wonderful uh, digital presence, now the biggest English speaking yeah. rugby side in the world. So I'm also very fortunate uh, that a lot of my content ties in with that big beast that is SA Rugby magazine. Mm. 
You are, a people. a lot of people don't know because you, you're not very, very, you know, you're a very private person. You, you, your family is the most important thing, uh, a close-knit family, a beautiful family. Um, but you really have mastered the art of juggling your, your, the time that you spend um, doing various things, whether it's uh, a, a writing, a, a, your, your, your Sunday Times column, the, the work you do for SA Rugby Mag or Kyo.Zilla today with family time. It's become very precious to you. You've got the most beautiful family. I'm fortunate enough to be uh, a bear witness to, you know, to, to, to that life that you have. But it's a one that you really, really are exceptional at. You're a good dad. You're a great partner. You're really just, you know, and, and is it something that you've had to learn over time or is it something that you've always known from the get-go as a dad that this is, you know, this is fa it's always family first? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I think I am a great dad. I wasn't necessarily always a great partner. That's why I've I got two different <laughs> yeah. mothers to my wonderful kids yes. and uh, you know I was very blessed uh, uh, to have a wonderful partner when I was younger and I've, yeah. got, I've got Oliver and Julia to show for that Yes, and uh, I've got a wonderful little daughter now Pike here and thanks to oh. Gillian for that and she's 11, Beautiful. El 11 months old so I've yeah. got a 22 year old, a 19 year old, 11 <laughs> and 11 month old <laughs> so I would say over time I've kind of learned to understand relationships and I think in my earlier earlier part in my early 20s and uh, early 30s I mean I would hate to have been with me because I was traveling so much with yes. the Springboks yes uh, with sport I certainly didn't juggle it like I juggle it now yeah and I was uh, I've also been been very fortunate to have a very accommodating partner yes. and uh, and uh, yeah there's not a day that I don't think I've, I have a, I work for a wonderful company yeah uh, they give me a lot of leeway uh, a lot of flexibility with my time at Highbury Media and uh, I also then work on a lot of products, you know, like being, uh, heading up uh, the digital across lifestyle, business and sport yes. means that I still get to enjoy rugby as my passion, Absolutely. but I have so many other varying interests uh, yeah. in the media and then obviously the stuff we do together, yeah. uh, some of the gigs we do and just being able to talk, talk life, talk sport, talk lifestyle, Absolutely. talk business every day. So it's, I'm, I'm in a very blessed position. Absolutely. Uh, when and I get up in the morning, I get to do what I want to do. Yeah. And none of that would have happened, in all honesty, without your authenticity. And, and, and it's, it, 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 it comes through abundantly in your life. And I, that's why it's so lekker. Let's talk a little bit about the, I mean, this year is a busy year. We've got a World Cup happening next year. Everyone's asking you, Mark, what's, where we, how we, how, how healthy is South African rugby at the moment? Do we have a proper shot at next year's World Cup? Yes, without a doubt. This is probably the healthiest we've ever been since the game turned professional in 1996. We have so much depth in a squad. We could pick two sides that I wouldn't be able to determine the winner beforehand. Uh, I look at the side that's playing on Saturday. There's eight players that would make the starting 15 of any in terms of the pack, any mm. team in the world. You've got another eight, some of them on the bench, some of them in the stands. We really are very, very blessed. Uh, there's a wonderful vibe. Uh, the Stormers winning the URC uh, under 20s. They've beaten um, uh, Ireland and England oh. this week in Italy in an extended Summer Six Nations tournament. So there's so much going on and yeah. look, there's so much to feel good about. And the wonderful thing about this Saturday, it's the first time since we won the World Cup in 2019 that South Africans will get to watch their World Champions oh, in action. Man. And they've sold out at Loftus. Yes. A Bloomberg should be a sellout and hopefully Cape Town Stadium or DHL Stadium will be a sellout as well on the 16th when the Springboks play for the first time in Cape Town with crowds at the stadium. Will the, will the Welsh stand a chance against the Springbok pack? No, I think the Welsh will be competitive for 50 minutes in the first test. Uh, the Springboks will win, win comfortably, and as the, as the series progresses, I think the, they'll win as comfortably, even though they'll mix and match teams for the second and third test. Two things quickly before we say goodbye and thank you for your time. Number one, you could live anywhere in the world. You've chosen the iconic hills of Cape Town and the Table Mountain side of the world. Cape Town is the best city on earth according to a lot of people and you're one of them. What makes Cape Town so special for you? Uh, just, I, I draw such inspiration from the mountain. I'm blessed to live in Frederick Devil's Peak. I've spent most of my adult life there. I'm a northern suburbs boyki, born in Coles River. Cape Town is just everything, yeah. you know, it's, it would always be my base no matter yes. where I kind of travel to. Uh, I'm the greatest ambassador for Cape yeah. Town because I was born in a house in Carl's River. My family's all in New Zealand uh, or, or they're traveling and kind of living in Europe. But home will always be Cape Town no matter where I am. And it's, I just love the people. I love the place. And I love the fact that I'm from the northern suburbs of you Cape too. Town as well. I love it. And then finally, outside of uh, a rugby, uh, do you have a premiership side you support? Is you, there someone in the premiership? You bet you have a premiership side that I support. And it's certainly not Manchester United or Man City or Chelsea. It's Liverpool! <laughs> 
can see the, the smile. one and only. <laughs> I love it. Mark Johan, pleasure to call you a mate. And importantly, Lekka, for a little bit of insight into your life and uh, and a small bit of the journey that you've had so far. Thanks, Ryan. And Lekka's a cruising this Toyota. Oh, it's, yeah, we didn't even speak about the Toyota. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a winner, and that's, this is the one that my partner wanted to test Yes, Tessa. yes. And uh, we did the hybrid. We weren't that crazy about the hybrid just because I yeah. still like to hear the noise of an yeah, engine. The combustion engine. And, uh, and she's loved it. She wanted the space. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little 11 month old that we're going to stick in the back there. So yeah, it's been a really, really lucky car to drive. Toyota have done really well in the segment of the market. There's not much that competes with this. I mean, this is um, the Corolla Cross. And by Cross, it means it's, it's like kind of between an SUV and, a, and a, a normal sedan. And they've done it really well. You can still feel confident enough to, to take it slightly adventurously uh, off-road at the same time on-road. Incredible presence. It drives like a sedan. It goes. It's economical. Uh, it ticks all the boxes in terms of a family car. It's what you'd want, and it's one that can kind of be used by any everyone in the house. Your um, your young adult uh, uh, kids can hop in here and go, Dad, I'm just taking the car down, and and they'd feel like it wasn't a daddy car. You know what I mean? They'd feel like they pretty cool behind the wheel. Yeah, and I mean, it's look, I know nothing about what goes on under an engine. I may know sport, but I don't know. I'm not a petrol head. Uh, I just enjoy driving cars. Yeah, and this is such a comfortable car to get into. You stick it into drive and off you go. It's really, really just feels like you're in cruise control the whole time. I love it. Speaking of cruise control, watch the spring box this weekend. Spring box to win by? 20. Love it. Thanks, Gio. Yeah.